A little bit nervous and Sumail, lots of pressure on this guy. Alan, I mean, what do you think? He performed so well coming into the finals. I mean, he was the star player of EG this tournament until now. I mean, I think he still is. I, I think he's done his part in these games. I really do. I, I thought he kept up with a, with a fairly farmed Annie Mage that uh, at least after the first few minutes had a fairly free time in his lane. I mean, 15 minute battle fury. He kept up nicely, but uh, I really felt like th the rest of Team Seeker just, just stepped up their game and notch and outplayed EG. I mean, I think this was the first game where I really felt one of the teams took it to the next level and just outperformed. And I mean, in an EG need to respond, or as we said, the series is going to end. I still think we're going to have a game five, but we're going to see right here. Yeah, of course, the picks and bands kicking off in game number four, and we're still seeing that Queen of Pain being banned out by Eugeniuses. And again, they're like, all right, Shao Fiend, we gave it once. We're not going to want to deal with that anymore. And the clock being banned out by Secret, deeming that even though those hooks were missed a little bit, don't want to deal with that. Oh, ooh, look at this. Things swapping a little bit on each side. Tusk going over to EG. What do you think, Kai? <laughs> Interesting first pick here by EG, but we've seen Universe having a really good performance on the hero as well, so I'm not too surprised seeing that. Yeah, and that, I guess, you know, it's given what the games we've seen so far in the finals been, do you think this was kind of a go-to for Secret going with the Naga and the Keeper of the Light? I mean, the Keeper has just proven to be immensely useful, mm -hmm. and there's just so much synergy in, in between how they play. Like, they have Null Field and the Heal from the Illuminate uh, Scepter from the Keeper of Light to keep down from the Tinker Spam and the Shuriken Spam. Uh, on top of that, they, like, recall very effectively uh, and use ganks very well. Uh, I mean, the Keeper has just been... I mean... They just utilize it so much better than everyone else, I feel like. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm curious to see the, the, the Tusk pick because who better to know how to counter it than the team that utilizes the best? So I think <laughs> Secret probably has a way of dealing with it already. It was Maybe. a very quick pickup of the Siren and keep off the light as well, so they probably expected to pick up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's true. And of course, I mean, Zai, we've, we've been praising his Tusk play all throughout the finals so far. He's really yeah. shown what next level things he can do with that hero. And EG now taking a little break, they're like, Okay, it looks like Secret really well prepared and going with the line a little bit more lockdown on the side of EG. Really neither team committing much though. I, I think both teams, you know, they both know this is an elimination game and, and very leery of giving away any information here in the first phase. And again, I, I like the Broodmother ban. We commented on the, that on the last game. Uh, in response, Secret going to go ahead and take out the Sumail Storm Spirit. I do think um, with the line pickup that we see here by the side of EG that they might suspect the Naga is going towards a carry, RTC mm -hmm. position. I think Naga plus Keeper of the Light does not have the greatest synergy in, in terms of support duos. So line, uh, picking up line here, you have two spells that deal with illusions very well. And therefore, also in combination with Tusk, you have not just a great burst duo, but also something that works well against illusions. Mm, very true. And, and this is something we've been contemplating the whole weekend, actually. Are we going to see Arteezy pick up that Nava again uh, in these finals? And it looks like this might be that chance. The Razor being banned out this time. Uh, people were expecting maybe that'd be the last pick in Game 3. Didn't see it. And we're not going to see it in Game 4 either. Yeah, you, you do wonder if this is a setup uh, for a secret picking up a Bristleback, perhaps, even yeah. though we've, we've questioned that hero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I actually think it works pretty nicely with the Naga Siren in terms of just being that tanky, pesky hero early in the game in the mid game. Take a little bit of pressure off the Naga if indeed she does end up in a core role. I mean, there's still so many good heroes left in the pool. We saw PL ban last game when there was a Keeper of the Light uh, picked up. Uh, there's still Dazzle, which has a lot of synergy with Naga, right. and True. it's pretty good against the Tusk. So, I mean, I'm not particularly sold on the Naga Siren Core, personally. I mean, I think even with just like a sleep set up into Keeper of the Light Blast, that's 500 damage. And especially in a patch where BKBs aren't that prevalent. Yeah, and it, and it also frees you up once the Keeper gets the Aghanims. It's not just the 500 damage. It frees you up so that if you have the right lineup, you can get your team, all your team in there for the heal too. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's funny, just in general, how we're talking about these drafts. I mean, that's one way I think you can tell that we're talking about two just amazing teams. It's like, well, they need to ban this hero and this hero and this hero. You only, <laughs> you only have five bans, guys. Yeah, I, that's why it's so tough. And that's why it's really interesting to see what they've prepared. I mean, you have to expect you're going to give away some of these really good and trademark heroes. Darkseer coming out once again in this game. It looks sort of similar to game two we saw from Team Secret, only this time Jari Copter is banned out, and I don't think it's likely that they'll pick up a Crystal Maiden. Honey, you kind of gave, gave me a weird look when the Darkseer came out there. What do you uh, think about this? No, uh, the, imp uh, the impression I have on the Darkseer pick is that you want to easen up on your short lane or 
I mean, I agree with Ben that it, it's not 100% sold on the Naga Sirene as a carry, but I do think Darcy puts a lot of pressure on towards the short, uh, on towards the short lane of Evil Genius here or they have to be dealing with that. So you can't just roam around the map, you can't just help up some mail a lot without you know, pressuring your, your carry's lane. And we've seen in the, in the last game, Fear was under a lot of pressure and hmm. he did not seem to have the greatest impact that he had to have in the last game. I would like to see them go back to like Shadow Demon on PBD and Lena on Fear. I think they had a lot of success with that uh, okay. during like a brief few weeks and it's exceptionally good at dealing with the darks here. True, yeah. Very true. So we'll see. We'll see. I mean, they do have many choices left. It's quite a bit of time left yeah, for EG. Yet again, we have to talk about this Samail here. I feel like when you start getting uh, Queen of Pain, Leshrac, Shadow Fiend, Storm Spirit all banned out, you know, we start talking about the Zeus. I don't think you'll see the Tinker again. Uh, we have seen Samail on Lena and Magnus in the past, but they've kind of had mixed results. I really, really do like EG going back to the Earthshaker, this time in conjunction with the Tusk <laughs> rather than against. But 27 and 5, again, record for PBD on that hero. You also might see this with the Universe in the offlane. Although, just based on what they picked up, I think you're going to see a universe on Tusk with PPD back on the Earthshaker. I'm actually not too opposed to the Tinker pickup because they have the last pick this time around, so they can sort of just hold, hold for it. And I think he did really well last game. He farmed incredibly fast. He kept up with the Entermates even after the Battle Fury. I don't think Sumail was the... Oh, no, not at all. Well, I mean, it was no, the no, anti no. that really made some trouble for EG. And like you said, Jacob, if you wait, I don't know if Secret will necessarily pick that preemptively going in. So maybe they'll have that chance for the Tinker. But so far, what we have is still pretty open for EG. And meanwhile, they've already covered their bases. They have all that lockdown. If they want to fight, they can. I actually like the anti-mage pickup for EG. Yeah. <laughs> it's good no. against Dark <laughs> here. No, which actually, which yeah. struggled a lot against last game. Like, the, the Iron Shell really hinders his farm, whereas... Um, it can be okay. dealt with pretty well by anti majors and also pretty good versus Naga and Keeper, a good against core Naga, that is. All right, and, and, and again, I'm, I'm still going back to what Simil Zero going to be because you've now got one more mid option taken away. No, I, I mean, certainly the Tinker was not the problem last game, but we talked during the draft. There, yeah, there you go. go. There you go. What <laughs> right on, Ben. What anti call. mage coming out immediately for EG. Now, Kai, as Alan was mentioning, I mean, a lot of options already kind of taken away from Simil. What are, what are you expecting here? I mean, generally, I would like to state that with a Lina pickup, you could opt towards Keeper of the Light can now focus towards the jungle again, mm -hmm. where he can have, you know, he's just going to farm up and potentially axe again, like what he pretty much did the, in, the, in the previous game. And then you have Naga in the core position, but they're not, they're still not sold on it, where Naga could still go towards the, I mean, Lina could still go towards the mid lane if, if something would occur in the draft of EG here. But generally, I would say that Lina's on the support, uh, port side of Naga as core. You can start with a net into follow-up stun on, off the Lina. So it's a pretty okay. good dual lane combo there, I would say. Very true. I mean, yeah, we do have to keep in mind where exactly is that Naga going to be placed for secret. There really aren't that many choices left for Samael. Like, so many yeah, exactly. heroes have been banned out or picked. And I think Tinker is probably the best option. I mean, that's kind of the yeah. only option left now. I mean, Puck being banned out too. Really, where do you go from here for EG? You can I'm, see they're in really deep thought. <laughs> I mean, Zeus, Zeus is the one hero left that he's really just had some absolute knockout games on. Magnus, he's been good on, but also looked a little shaky in some other games. Uh, I like Zeus. I think yeah. he's pretty good against uh, illusion-based heroes. I think if it were a different team, they would pick Viper, but I, I don't think that they really pick that at all for yeah. Sumail. Yeah. All right, they're actually just going to ban the Viper out themselves. So Secret, ah, wow. the Blood Seeker coming out for... So okay. that is a Lina, is that a Lina mid and a Blood Seeker on I, the short lane? I don't think so. I think yes. so. Yes. So they kept the, open, uh, the options open and they could still switch around. I, I do assume that EG was still semi-sold on uh, core Naga here. Mm. Rupture is a glorious thing against anti mage. It really is. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, yeah. that, there's no better way to put that. Yeah, and of course, Bloodseeker being quite successful for Team Secret. They are also ahead. And there you go. As you guys mentioned, Zeus kind of being the only choice left, but also not a bad pickup for EG. So, ladies and gentlemen, everyone here in the stadium and also at home, we are ready for game number four. This could be the last game of ESL1 Frankfurt 2015, but we'll have to find out if EG can tie it up and go to the very, very last game. Let's find out with our casters over on the stage. That's right, let's get it underway as we go into what could be the last game. Will the sun set on the hopes for one team?
It's oh, well, a nice rise with that. the Knights. Okay, so my we do have the sucks. sun that's kind of setting here, yeah. but I know you're trying to make this as epic as humanly possible, yes. Toby. I think the draft speaks for itself here. I mean, this is the four games and four drafts that are all completely different for each team. I have to say, I'm loving Team Secret. As they were talking about the analyst, as they could potentially switch up their draft at any time. And I feel like this is one of the mo most notable things that both uh, uh, Evil Geniuses and Team Secret do, is when you watch them draft, they leave themselves very open, very versatile picks. They like to pick up heroes like Naga's Iron, right? That can both be a support as well as the potential one position. Earthshaker is another good example of a hero that goes from support to core, and you can pick it up early to leave yourself options. Towards that last pick, you had no solid lockdown in what exactly Team Seeker were going to be running, and that Bloodseeker happens to be a solid last pick that counters Evil Geniuses pretty damn well, most notably on the Animage. Yeah, and that was what they were searching for. They needed something, something to control up Fear's Animage. For now, let's actually have a bit of a quick run through of our lanes and see what's going on. So we can head up to the top lane of EG to kick it off, and you see the core. It is the Animage of Fear. He'll be babysat by Aoi 2000, taking the role as the Lion. As Nahaz was saying, the unbelievable win record for the Earthshaker played by PPD. Samal will take up the little guy with the stash, also looks very much like a Mario character. It is Zeus, and that leaves EG's a final hero universe, while uh, Secret are actually running a little bit more of aggression, which I love. They're actually pulling out the Lena core on the back of S4. That puts Kuro into the role as the Naga Siren. More help to help him out. That's going to be Puppy as the Keeper of the Light once again. Zaya's the Darkseer, and the last one, Arteezy, Bloodseeker, and now they run. Already Fear being set up. Kuro has the Iron Shell on him. they got to be careful with the Riptide damage and the Illuminate. It actually misses all heroes of EG, but Fear, so he'll away. Blink. He'll blink himself up. The attack will disjoint. Only barely surviving. He does grab the bounty rune, however. Fear spent so much time there. I was waiting for him to level up that blink, and it just seemed to take forever. But he finally does, does get out. The problem is he's going to have to burn through a large share of those tangos. So the bounty rune does come at a pretty expensive cost. I love the way the secret fought that, though. With Naga Siren on the front lines, one of the tankiest heroes at level one due to an okay HP pool, but it's really that natural armor that Nago Siren has that allows Sumail, her to be a front line. Sumail and S4, they're just battling it out. The Light Striker Ray is going to connect again from S4. Sumail dropping low. He's still got Arc Lightning available, but no real consumables. And it's actually buffing up Bloodseeker. Keep your eyes very, very close to Narteezy, because this is how... This is how Secret loves to play. This is Slave just off target from S4. This is how Secret loves to play, but EG get the buff up too. Yeah, they're hoping to be able to, I think with this two-man aggression here, the dual lane, they're hoping to be able to keep the Earthshaker locked in that top lane, but he's spending a lot of time middle, um, so you can see. Sorry, S4 should be really careful about PPD. No, he certainly should. That's exactly what I'm saying. But the problem is Sumail doesn't have the mana right now. He's waiting for that bottle to come out to him. Once he has the bottle, then maybe if they get a block off, they could go for a kill. But it kind of relies on them having Lightning Bolt against Zeus, especially in those Howie. first three levels. The surge up, instantly the stun comes on Koro. There's no ensnare, there's no control. So this kind of combo they're trying to do with the Naga, Riptide, Iron Shell, it's becoming rather difficult. Okay, now your opening's there. PPD's got the vision. Look for the fissure on mid. He holds it. Does S4 know? S4 knows. No, he's, he's got perfect knows. vision. Yeah, but here's the thing, right? Zeus doesn't have that much burst damage. He went for um, the 101, which is very natural for Zeus, and he goes for the second level on Arc Lightning because it's really good for CSing with. Level 1 Arc Lightning, you spam it out three times, it leaves the range creep with one hit for a deny. Level 2 will actually kill the range creep, so it makes a pretty big difference in both experience as well as CS in general. So, Samel so doesn't actually have that much burst damage to really threaten S4's life. They would need an incredibly good block off to actually kill him. How about an Invis Rune to set up for that block well, off. That's exactly what they could use Zai, to kill us. Start for. on top lane. They're trying to burn off a lot of his mana. He's still able to surge away, so Zai will survive to fight another day. Yeah, Zai's going to have a pretty tough time uh, mana management wise. He's up against two different heroes who burn through mana. Lion, you'll see him pick up mana drain at level two just to get that little bit of extra assist in taking away the mana of the Darkseer. Keeping my eyes on bottom lane too, because Puppy. We have to keep in mind that uh, Goro is spending most of his time on the top lane. BBD is still waiting to have a gank on S4. Uh, and Sumail still doesn't have that level 4 yet. 
But the fact that Kuro is up here means that Poppy's able to pull through and get solo experience. And having to stack the jungle and Illuminate farm, which means the progression of Keeper of the Light is a lot quicker. And he's trying to push the Creep Wave into Universe or harass Universe out as well. Uh, so there's a lot of control in the bottom lane. Universe is still finding experience, which is great for him. But it just means we're getting a little bit quicker levels on that Keeper of the Light. Now PPD in towards the middle lane. Coming in behind S4, Samel, he's got the Lightning Bolt available. And the Light Strike Array will connect on Samel, but there's your Fissure. Arc Lightning and Lightning Bolt, do they have enough to kill off S4? He's pretty low, but Samel, yeah, he knew it wasn't enough. He threw out another Arc Lightning because he was going to get more damage out of that. PPD, not enough mana for another Fissure as it's coming off cooldown. So and this is the is disadvantage, for right? This is the disadvantage for going for the extra level on Arc Lightning. It means you still only have level 1 Lightning Bolts at level 4. That's only 100 damage. If he'd actually leveled up, maybe they could have killed Lina and committed for that one. Unfortunately, not the case there. At least they put pressure on S4. He had to go all the way back to base, which leaves our Zeus plenty of time to farm up. They don't necessarily need to kill Lina if they can force him out of lane. Kuro too far away from Zai to get that surge, but he will be able to ensnare on PPD. The Fissure will fly out as well, but doesn't block. But that's not a bad thing, because Zao is coming in from behind, and they might have more support. Yep, there's Samel rotating up. Zai could be in trouble. Surges away, the lightning not going to stop him. In fact, Koro turns with the Iron Shell into Samel with the Bottle Charters and the Stuns. S4 trying to buy some space. Light Strike Array splits the heroes in two, but doesn't hit either of them, allowing Samel to get the first hit, and Zai has to chase him down. Is there enough damage? With Fear now turning on S4. Light Strike Array on the Universe. Oh, universe oh, is killing him. off Darkseer. Now into the Snowball on top of S4, but Arteezy, he's still here. He's so low that S4 down for the count. Owie's low, but this means Arteezy can really start the mop up. He's hit level 6. He's got rupture available. He's killing up Owie 2000. One attack, and that should be all it really takes. More support. Universe is going. He's on the high ground. Hits the Illuminate. Universe trying to run back in the safety of the tower. And the fissure area of PPD able to do so, but what a rotation from Arteezy. And what a time to have level 6 as well. He's not even 5 minutes into the game. Unbelievable! The amount of action that we've seen in these games, everyone is rotating as much as possible in the first 10 minutes, and game number 4 is no different, man. Again, Universe as well as the Bloodseeker, both coming up from that bottom lane all the way to top just to be a part of that. Good read from Arteezy, a long drawn out fight, but he saw, okay, if I TP in, there's so many heroes low, I can take advantage of that, and sure enough, double kill, and an excellent start for a hero. That is the definition, I think, of a snowball carry. And now they actually are able to move him out with these with these quick kills he's able to go into the jungle and start farming this up and it gives this gives space to Kuro on the top lane to try and catch up to his level six get the solo experience and fear he's a little intimidated by the fact that Kuro is just standing inside the lane he's not quite sure exactly what he's up against because the blood seeker is missing because rupture is available and if he gets caught by this potentially it's his death and here's a little bit of in-depth mechanic knowledge. Um, for, for those of you guys who don't know, Rupture actually does hurt blinking heroes. This is why I said it was a counter to the Animage, right? The Animage, you have to blink over 1300 range in the space of 0.25 seconds in order to get a, uh, in order to dodge the damage of Rupture, essentially. Notice that Fear, oh. he can only blink, max out blink only goes to 1150. Middle lane, Arteezy, he's picked up a haste rune, they put the Iron Shell on him, and PPD is walking to Arteezy. The problem is, he didn't see him. He backed up just just before PPD showed himself out the tree line, and this is because we are during nighttime. The, the, the vision is very restricted. Anyway, it looks like we're going to be seeing, of course, straight Battle Fury for the Animage, uh, actually ignoring Treads for now. Um, a lot of Animages right now prefer to go to Treads. The early stats are really efficient for you to farm up uh, some neutrals occasionally, but also the presence in lane is pretty big as well. So. I'm a bit surprised he's mid. Fissure, gonna connect on S4, it's on the wrong side, but Samael, he's got the ulti available, he need the shards to connect, to have enough straight burst damage up against him, but the TP took too long for Universe to arrive in the mid. The Earthshaker Tusk combination, uh, as much as they were talking about how Earthshaker is really good versus Tusk a lot of the times for the counter initiation, uh, early on, the combination of uh, Icicle Shards as well as Fissure can actually play really well. Just because you miss the Fissure block doesn't necessarily mean that you can't still block him out with the Icicle Shards thereafter. So look for that combination uh, potentially on that middle lane. It's what they were looking for. Unfortunately, Universe just TP'd in perhaps a second too late. Top lane's still going really well for Team Secret, though. Uh, they're getting a lot of experience out of this and a lot of farm. They're putting pressure on the enemy as well, who was forced into that early ring of health. He'll probably go into treads after this. He just needed that extra regen to deal with the harassment. 
And once he has that life back, maybe he's okay. Seagull can back up. He'll get the space to farm up and he'll finish the full Battle Fury. There's those treads you were talking about. But he's still in a good time for you. He's okay with this. It's just the rest of EG that have to try and find some openings. There goes the Thunder Gods for our scouts. Out the fact that S4 trying to come for the rune. And Samael, he definitely wants this one. And PPD is happy to spam out fishes, primarily because Samael can just give him the Arcane Brood trigger as well. So there's a, a lot of mana that can come in between EG. Universe has got to make some big plays here. He's about to pick up his level six. In fact, they're going to go for the smoke ink now. This is perfect. They need to go up to the top lane. They need to address this Darks here. With level three, Ion Shields is taking its toll on Fear's farm just ever so slightly. It is keeping him completely out of the jungle entirely, and it's also forcing him to miss a couple of CS against the tower. Uh, here comes your uh, snowball in. They're chasing out the Kuro. The shots at Walker in, but Fisher does. Zai can't come in, and also the support from Keeper of the Light isn't really there. Maybe he can move up further. Puppy, he's got blood and light available. Kuro oh, is out of the get tree. Out. No. The mana point will end up canceling it off. The blood right has also arrived. PPD, RT's in the middle of the fight, able to find a pickoff on him. Meanwhile, back in the river is some mail on S4. The Laguna Blade, there's no mana available for up at S4 with his point up in Fiery Soul. There's the damage there. Life Strike Array, he's got him! 114 life. Puppy will be able to sit there and watch it all happen. And even even pulling back to the front lines, because, yep, there's the recall. So S4 gets full bottle charges back up again. Could even give a charge over to Puppy. And, uh, yep, they'll be happy to go. They're going to find AOI behind the tower as well. RTZ wants to go for the dive. He needs a couple of hits, though. And, unfortunately, the damage was not enough to make the reveal on AOI, who just TPs out instead. Because mm -hmm. if they had the reveal, then the Darks here potentially could have gone for the, for the back. Cancel the TP. Middle lane, snowball in from Universe. Got the Walrus Punch available as well. Sending S4 up in the air and with the Sigil. Try and slow down the retreat. Koro arrives with the Illuminate connecting, hits on the Riptide and the Slave Samael, a very injured man. He was just hoping enough damage could be done to S4, he could just go with the Lightning Bolt and the Thunder God's Wrath and S4. Well, Samael would have had to go to high ground, he lost the vision on S4 as he went into the tree line. They do have that dire observe wall, but doesn't see far enough over to the cliffside to keep the vision on S4 where he went. Yeah, Samael, understandably, was a little bit nervous about going up that hill. Those are beautiful icicle shards block, and if they could get uphill, throw out the lightning bolts and the ultimate Zeus instant kills S4. But at the same time, if he so obviously just shows where he's going to be running, he's going to be hit by the light strike array, and probably the Laguna Blade from the lean, and, and Zeus would be the first to fall there. So, good choice not to go in for that kill. It's still, though, Team Secret with the aggression slightly staying ahead of EG every step of the way. And obviously, as you're picking up that extra kill, you're going to start snowballing pretty heavily, most notably on Arteezy, who already has the hand of Midas Treads. He's 3-0. He's got the top CS on the board as well. This guy has some of the highest net worth you will see at the 10-minute mark. You can look at the other, other part of that, that angle as well, which is look at the low net worth over on EG. Like, PPD is still only, okay, now he's level 4. Uh, uh, but he's not really fighting much more. And yep, that's a blink in, but I'm missing the Lion Strike array. Is it worth the Laguna Blade? Do they have enough damage? No, they no. do not. No, there's no way. Lina's a potentially good counter to the Animage later on to the game because of the pure damage, but obviously early on, that damage, uh, the Laguna Blade just doesn't do anything against that, even level one spell shield. <laughs> Okay, so how does how does PPD get himself back into this game alongside a Valley 2000? Normally, it's probably a little bit more universe. greedy, like Lion used to have a Blink Dagger. Where does he find the space? It's got to be coupled with Universe. Universe has got to find the openings for Snowball plays, whether it's bringing the supports in or not, and then having the Zeus ultimate on top of that. So they can actually go to any side lane and still feel the effect of that Zeus mid through the Thunder's God's Wrath. They just need to find pickoffs with the offlane Tusk. Uh, you compare that to the dual offlane of Team Secret with the Dark Seer Naga Siren, they are way more comfortable with sitting back and farming as opposed to EG who need those kills. Well, EG's coming for it. They see RTZ, just lightning bolt harassment from Sumail. But the ping came out on both PPD as well as Universe. They were scouted out for a short period of time. As maybe now the bottom battle for the, well, it's only a bounty rune, but S4's making a play for it. Snowball down. Koro turns on the Song of the Siren. Ooh. If they get up on high ground, they seize to mail. Yep, they're not going to try and battle this. They just take the rune and get the hell out of dodge. Yeah, again, Team Secret, no need to fight if you don't have to. Go ahead and prolong this game. I mean, even look at, uh, you're like Puppy, right? Like, he's playing the Keeper of the Light. He's the hard five position for Team Secret, and yet he's still getting a lot of farm because he's pushing in the top lane. He's farming up neutrals. This is what a Keeper of Light can do if they get Get space every single one of these heroes can farm. So all you need is space created. Is yeah, what you're saying. Is, is, 
They might be able to. That's why they're trying to utilize smokes and go for these pink offs, but they're just not finding anything. Team Secret are always outmaneuvering evil geniuses. They always have that response. And with no more smokes for six minutes, this is a big smoke to blow unless they can find something that they do. They find Puppy. The Fisher Stunner can actually hit RTD as well. Zeus ensuring the kill by throwing down that Thunder God's Wrath also reveals just how much help the Secret were bringing in. So they bring in Koro. But they needed something, and they got something. It just wasn't absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Just note, like, a Team Secret, even though it was just a straight, simple pick off on the Keeper of the Light, I think something that Team Secret do probably the better than any other team is their teamwork and responses, instant responses with TPs. On PPD? Saw... Mm -hmm. No, he won't fissure. I thought maybe he could cancel the TP out from Arteezy, but he didn't have vision around the tree line. So there was no vision there. I mean, this is a Naga Siren game, but it's a Naga Siren support, yet Team Secret are still essentially ratting out evil geniuses. Coddle pushing top. They're trying to chip down towers bit by bit. Every single lane is feeling pressure, and EG are just kind of scrambling to find a kill somewhere to relieve some of this pressure. But they're not actually getting the right heroes. They got the Coddle, but that's nothing. That's peanuts compared to the rest of Team Secret. And how do you even find the right heroes? Like, Aoi just lost half of his life from, or well, even more than half of his life from one Illuminate while he's defending the bottom tower. You can't even stand close to the Keeper of the Light. He's a level four Illuminate Coddle. Puppy is having the greatest time ever. Yeah, it certainly is. I, their fallback, I mean, I think they've lost enough control in the early game that they're they're eventually just going to have to give up on going for kills because they're simply going to be out-farmed too heavily. And their next play is going to be falling back on the Animage who gets, like, once he gets his third item. So it might be that EG, uh, even though they don't really have the heroes for it, it might be just EG having to sit back and play a little bit more passive and just wait for the Animage to come into the game, um, which is such a shame because there are four other heroes outside of the Animage were, were picked up specifically. They were designed even just to be able to fight in the first 25 minutes of the game and establish dominance. Well, they have to right now to be at least have the intimidation they can find in front of their T1 towers in the mid and the bottom. Because if they start losing more towers, like Lion just had to deny that bottom tower, but they're losing map control. And to any mage, that's practically death. He needs yeah. to control up these camps. We saw how Arteezy played that any mage where the second he could, he would jump into the Radiant jungle. If he had to, he could blink himself back to his own T1 towers and then say, support will come and help me out. Mm. But he was always about manipulating the map control area. Yeah, just a small example, like Darkseer picking up the mech. Just compare the two offlaners, right? Tusk is, is supposed to be a bit more of a, a, a pick-off hero. Up. S4, yeah. Fly Ooh, nice the four stop in time gets himself away. There's no Thunder God's Wrath damage, but Aoi 2000 also no mana for a finger. Now he does. They kill off Arteezy, ending the big spree. Aoi's able to do it, and that's that killing you're talking about while AM is still farming up. It's his 200 gold away from having that Battle Fury. There we go. Evil Genius is not necessarily looking out for the kills, but now responding to whatever secret do and that is a bit of over aggression but this is almost a guaranteed kill from s4 this kind of rune at this early on into the game when you already have such a big level advantage he's got level two laguna blade he practically kills a hero with just his ultimate and his dragon slave not a bad combo when he sees the mail will he get there in time for the yules the answer is no Still, still looking for someone else that observer ward's watching universe moving back it will time out now so he won't see anything else but he's going to find PPD. Oh, wow. But there's a sentry ward from PPD, so he knows that S4 is there. And in fact, S4 realized it too. The way PPD twitched on the Nerf Shaker, it was just an instinct reaction to the fact that, oh my god, there's actually Alina here. Yeah, EG, I mean, I, I believe they did have some sense of what was going on there. So good movement, I suppose, from EG, but S4 also just a little unlucky that he didn't find that opening. And Invis Rune at that point should just free, be a free pickoff, but couldn't find a hero just slightly out of range of most notably the Zeus. If he got that Yule Scepter to stop the TP, free kill, essentially. Well, Animage has this Battle Fury, Fear. Three Mercs behind where Arteezy had it during the previous game. But still going for the same build-up, so again, looking for a Vladimir's offering. You are on the dire sides, so you're happy just to jump in and try and do Roshan by yourself. Obviously, you want a little bit of help, though. But going up, actually, even taking Roshan up against Naga, Coddle, as well as Darkseer. Even then, like, you gotta add blood right on top of all of this. And uh, Samael, real oh, wow. trouble for him. Universe, considering as you're rolling into this one, Samael, he could push him out with the shards, but Samael, well, there's your shards, there's your fissure, but you've already lost your Zeus. Then Koro, well, you'll set her up again. S4 still got Laguna Blade. He wants Universe, he's gonna claim him, and does with style. 
couldn't even get off the snowball in time. The chain there with the Yule Scepter, as well as the Light Strike Array, was enough to be able to hold them in. And now they've got an opportunity that they really wouldn't have expected this early on to the game. The chance to be able to take down, maybe not take down this Tier 2 tower, but at least bring it pretty low. The chip damage already down to over half of its HP. I think, I think they actually can kill it. PP does, PP does not actually have mana to throw out a Fissure. He's sitting in the back lines almost as an intimidation factor. Once the Sol Ring goes, he will have Fissure. But when you have Arteezy dragged on top, the blind line pulling him back. Owie, Finger of Death still on cooldown for two more seconds. They yours set for him up and S4. Bomb line strike right and the light right is down. Thunder God's Wrap has a great back end. Will Samal have enough damage on the side? There's Fear with a double kill, making the most mana void, but it's a BKB on the Bloodseeker. He's free to move where he wants. So Arteezy will take a double kill as well retreating away the shards try and lock him in it nice does find out easy and with that sigil behind him he can't run quickly now they snowball after him the blood ride is up and a samantan universe going on him with a finger of death the damage is enough and zoom nail will take the kill a big one a large amount of money for him and now you see the double blink tag is arriving in for eg just to articulate how important that last pickoff was, Universe snagging the Icicle Shards made that fight okay for Evil Genius. This game, this game was rapidly snowballing against them, but they managed to get just a 1,700 gold swing purely off of the Bloodseeker kill, and also a large amount of experience, about 1,600 as well. So th that pickoff was so critical. Otherwise, Team Secret would have probably just walked away, okay, happy with the fight at middle. We managed to just give ourselves even bigger of an, uh, bigger side of an advantage than we expected this early on into the the game. I mean, you just look at EG's lineup. Team Secret weren't supposed to be in the position that they are right now. I mean, if they were ahead at all, it would be very minimally. But for 20 minutes into the game, over a 5K lead and 3,000 experience on top of that, mm -hmm. it's it's a massive, actually. I think that's uh, bigger than the numbers really show. Especially with a lineup like Team Secrets, which, again, every single one of these heroes, if they get space, He's able to farm up, and that's exactly what Team Secret have with this aggression. Universe, the task up holds up the haste for him, battling up against Koro. He's already used most of what he's got, but the Sigil make it hard to chase it down. The Fissure cancelling the recall, so Koro's stuck here. At the same time, the Illuminate will only hit PPD. And that Fissure's still there, they couldn't chase any further. But they're fine with that. Universe able to steal the haste rune, he's happy. Yeah, the Vladimir's picked up by our Animage with the Battle Fury already up. So he's still getting a good amount of farm. Jump in. Oh, Jesus, Universe, hello. <laughs> it's like he's just trying to be over-aggressive. Force yeah. movements in from Secret that don't have to come out. No, that's exactly what he wants, right? Like, that kind of play is never intended to try and get kills. He's actually in kind of a questionable position there. If S4 was there with the Yules, he's dead. But he is just forcing rotations from Team Secret. Now you know, hey, most of them are going to be middle. Try and split push. Try and push out that bottom lane. Give us some space to find farm. Well, they managed to do so. PPD is also having a bit of a wander around, trying to find an opening. It's going to be both Kuro and S4 coming down to defend the bottom we'll lane of the Fisher Observer Ward. Area. There is a Sentry Ward down, however. So if Secret walk over there, they can get rid of that Ops Ward. But for now, it's doing the job for EG. They can see what's coming in from behind them. And PPD hanging in the trees. Kuro is walking in. Song of the Siren is available. But in comes Fear, and they've got Puppy Dead to rights. Before it even starts, Thunder God's Wrath gives them vision, and the Yule from S4 will save him. But in comes the Snowball. Kuro has to slow this down, but the Sigil is up. Up, and this is making it very difficult for S4 to get himself away. They just try and walk off with Koro, but now Aoi jumps in. Finger of Death is up. They're gonna take one. They're probably gonna take two. It's a double kill for the anti major Koro. Finger of Death, they find the kill. EG, momentum has been gained. And Secret lose yet another engagement. There's two in a row now. And they're actually going to lose Roshan, which is more critical. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the pickoff on the Darkseer, I would say, or at least the ending kill at the end of a team fight, they get the Darkseer kill. It meant it, they stopped the progression of Team Secret. That last team fight means now the momentum is going the way of Evil Geniuses, especially if they can get an Aegis in their hands. They can go ahead and try and play aggressively with the enemy, who normally, at this point in time in the game, isn't really looking for fights because he wants his Manta first. It's such a huge upgrade. But with an Aegis, you might as well utilize it, right? I mean, they have a lot of potential counters to him. Rupture, you've got a last just mass burst damage out from the Lina, who's going to get an Agonins eventually. But 
At this point, you've got that second life in the enemies. You might as well utilize it to try and get some towers. You got that, and you got bonus damage. With the death of Roshan, that's the full Aghanim Scepter now done for some mail. And with the Blink Dagger also on the Tusker, this was what happened during the last fight. You got a Blink Dagger over on Tusker and a Blink Dagger over on the Lion. The enemies isn't really in that much peril because your two primary controllers, the Lion and the Tusker, are capable of being in the right place at the right time. Because what are you going to do in, in, in really to counter it? You have a Darkseer, a Vakwal, your Scepter, a Naga Song. But most of this that we were talking about, you're committing to try and kill off the Anti-Mage to stop him from just carving apart your team, removing all your mana. Because once that happens, your mana pool's not really that great. Even though it's easy trying to run this Shadow Blade with everything else he's got, it's 300 mana for his abilities. That gives him an extra 200 in his pocket. But that's not much to speak of once you get two hits in from an anti-mage with mana burn. Uh, there's more incentive also for evil geniuses to, to group up and potentially try and push towers and force fights. The Shadow Blade on the Bloodseeker means that he is obviously a very good pickoff source now. He can pretty much solo run around the map and he finds someone like the Lion, the Earthshaker can easily pick them off and slow down certain items like the Blink Dagger on their Earthshaker. Well, if they can stop that PPD, he's still sitting at 2.3k net worth. That's like the primary thing is the fact he's only got 400 gold going towards that Blink Dagger at the moment, and he's still having to be the sacrificial lamb. He put more money into the lion so he's capable of surviving. The Earthshaker throw a fissure. Later in the game, maybe then he can pick up a Blink Dagger if things go right. But PPD has to be the sacrificial lamb. Man, I love this Glimmer Cape Naga Siren. It reminds me of, like, the Ogre Magi that we saw several patches ago where he was just, like, a super tanky four-position support where he was able to be right up in the enemy's face. The, the Naga Siren is essentially the same. Not so much an HP pool, though she's all right in that regards, but just because she has such high armor and then with the Glimmer Cape, she has a natural magic resistance as well. And in comes Fear the Radiant Jungle. He's looking to try and creep skip this out so they can finish up the tier one town. That's exactly what they'll do. The shards will help him. But this is more and more money just rolling into the bank account of fear with the tier one tower to drop two. Even some mail after picking up the Aghanim Scepter has another 13, 1400 goals. He gets the last hit in that bottom tower. So the next item will also arrive. And then I actually ask you a, a different question. What happens if you get Refresher Aghanim Scepter on the Zeus? How much life will that be for both the Coddle as well as the Lena to play around with? Oh, or maybe even the Bloodseeker, right? Like, if he actually is anywhere nearby, and well, he has that Blood Rage on himself, you know, that, that's going to be bringing him below half HP. Oh, they're fighting Puppy. He's bringing in more support. He gets attacked, but Arteezy will be able to arrive. Puppy low, and they turn on the Song of the Siren. It's wasting the BKB of Bloodseeker, though, but will it really matter? Back back, back into you. a double Blood Rage. The big silence, Owie. He's got nothing more to give. In fact, it's a double kill for Arteezy. Yeah, with a clean, how much damage he's to finish up? One of the time, and there's your mana point. A double kill for him. The bloody light pushing him back. Koro keeping out the tree lines. Can they hit him? You bet your Nelly he can. Triple kill on the ice shot. Oh, Blocking on Poppy. He'll go down. The damage, the damage is there. Oh, oh kill for Mia. And they'll take the tier two tower, which is already entered on the bottom. And EG, they're already back in this game. Oh, yes, they are. In fact, I would say that they're ahead in this game. Toby Fear is going to be able to take down this Tier 2 tower. He's got Manta straight up, and that's really where the enemy is then finally able to enter in fights because he just blows up certain heroes like support so quickly, and he's already doing that before. Oh, the Tier 2 actually being trying to give away to PPD in order for him to get the Blink Dagger a little faster. Unfortunately, slightly off the mark, does go the way of the Dire. Still, though, with the amount of space that they've granted themselves, Earthshaker stood, should be able to farm up the jungle in order to get that Blink Dagger, and then we have some major initiation outside of just the jump in from Universe with that Blink. And Fear could actually, if he wants to, yeah, he's going to. He's just going to take the Tier 1 tower in the middle lane. There's no fortification available for it, and he's still got this Aegis model for another minute. So even if Secret initiate on him, he's going to be fine. The Tuscar is right behind him to help him out if things get wrong. And in fact, all of Secret are coming back to defend this. This gives space for Owie now on the top lane to find, find farm. And in fact, Simaus is checking it out. So it's not just like you look at the net worth and it finally goes to the advantage of EG, but if you look in just team fights, right, so many of the items that Secret have utilized their net worth to pick up may just be completely countered out by EG's initiation. Such things as like the BKB from Arteezy, they could easily just jump him. And Bloodseeker, especially if he's got his... Uh, Speaking of jump, ooh. they found him. The shards are coming in. Arteezy is the BKB, but Universe right behind him turns the rupture on Owie, who will just nice TP himself away to safety. The damage is not enough to kill off Owie. As long as there's a Morky's fight, but that's easy, it's not. 
down on the top. Zeus will find the kill, and yet another injection of money coming in to Samael. And look at that tier three tower at the bottom lane. It's 27 minutes in, and it's almost down to half HP. He's got the Manta Illusions marching in to do some extra damage, and he's also clearing through the enemy jungle as well. Remember where we were talking about how greedy Team Secret's team is and the fact that every single one of their heroes can farm. Remember how much space they had. They had oh, basically 70% of the map to utilize to farm, and that's rapidly being, being cut into with Animage occupying their jungle and EG holding on to their side of the map as well. Man, just looking at, okay, we have a 28-minute Blink Dagger on the Earthshaker at the same time the Secret Smoke Up. This could actually be quite terrible for them. Um, but even the graph, like, uh, checking out the graph, if I'm looking at this experience graph, almost 10,000 experience swing just within the last, not even 10 minutes. EG have turned this game completely on his head and a rapidly emerging game five here. He's looking for this. S4 is low. There's just done. Needs oh, a no. visual off his side. Interrupted. The visual still connected. The live track array holding PBD in position. There will be a counter kill. But while this is going on, he still kept five heroes of secret occupied on top, while bottom lane, Fear is approaching the tier three tower. They have to bring people back for this. s is the only one. He does have the Agon Scepter upgrade for the Lena Laguna. And in fact, Coddle's already come back too. Yeah, they'll hold. Yeah, they'll absolutely hold. Oh, oh, they're going to jump him. There's a finger of death. S4, mana void. It wasn't enough. He basically had full mana with the one charges. So when he the damage of fear, and he has to flick himself in the trees and TP out. Ow, he will not be so lucky. The blinding light into the mana break. Son of Keeper of the Light, or mana leak, son of Keeper of the Light. Stop the TP out. It's one of the best small technical plays you can do if you get like four staff uh, as well as the blinding light putting that mana leak on somebody and then pushing them around as much as possible in order to stun them is exactly how you can stop a TP. Arteezy just shy of being able to catch out Universe there. And Tusk. I don't love this. <laughs> Lotus Orb picked up by him. This is so big. If you ever manage to get a Lotus Orb and reflect back the rupture on Bloodseeker, I mean, what does the hero do at that point in time? Especially if he's already blood raged himself, he just sits there, can't do anything. Maybe pops his BKB for defense, but he obviously can't run anywhere. Oh, he basically dies. That's, that's really the answer to that. Uh, and Fear also now has more control. He picked up the Basher, so we're looking at an Abyssal Blade. The way where he can keep the, the Bloodseeker in range of him and not having to run after him all the time. Not to mention, it's just a nice little control effect on anyone that may be TPing out. Yeah, and the reason we just keep on getting so excited about this is, is that Team Secret were in such... I mean, this looked to be the most dominant win of the whole entire yeah. series. I was actually depressed. I thought we were going to have like a... Mm, whitewash. Yeah, exactly. 22 evil zero geniuses, final, you could say. Yeah, Evil Geniuses in a series of incredibly smart maneuvers managed to pull this game not only even, but potentially back into their favor. That being said, there's still plenty of opportunities for Team Secret. Um, they still have the, the Naga Siren, who is one of the more powerful supports going into late game. They've got a very farm blood seeker even if he's not as farmed as the animage anymore he's still going to be a significant factor and uh, you also have the laguna blade with level three coming up in just a second that's 950 damage that cuts the animage down to size real quick mm -hmm. and even then we have to keep in mind secret one of their big things their bread and butter of the esl1 tournament here in frankfurt has been their split push control through the keeper of the light recall the fact you've got this academic scepter up and running they can move across the map, keep the push going, and make EG wonder, is it worth the trade to try and force a lane in? The bottom lane has been pushed in by any major illusions, but here comes Puppy, pulls it back, your top lane and your mid lane is already attacked, EG have to fall back. It's either they find a kill now or they when fall back. get the tier one. Yep, <laughs> it's, it's, why not, man? Why not? Yeah, just cut the creep wave at the same exact time, you basically stall up the push in the middle lane, you get some free gold, and let's not forget about the bottom lane push where Secret do have to deal with that. So, one minute to Roshan. Next yeah. thing to add to our timer. This is absolutely where our next team fight has to occur. I don't think Team Secret are willing to give it up because I believe Evil Geniuses with an Aegis will have the advantage to be able to push uphill. They'll get like Abyssal Blade plus an Aegis and Animage Mage can just blink and instantly kill at least one hero, and then they can go for a full Rax advantage. So I think Team Secret have to fight it. They're waiting for that Observer Ward to get scouted out. S4 just enjoying his farm for now. And there it is, actually found the sentry ward up on top. Or at least PPD threw the ward down. He's still not quite sure if he wants... Okay, he will. He'll blink out and take care of it. Our crowd is getting very excited, Toby. <laughs> I would like to know what about. I can't see it.
Uh, item pickups here. Okay, so talking about as we start transitioning maybe more into the mid-game here, Team Secret, I believe it is to their advantage to stall this game out late. It would most definitely be to their advantage if they were able to trans, uh, transition this Nagas Iron from a support into a core position, but that doesn't seem like it's very likely to happen in the next 20 minutes. And Kuro is just too far down in the net worth chart. This is one of the downsides of going for the Glimmer Cape build, right? Um, but I still believe that they have an advantage simply because the enemy is going to max out sooner than the Bloodseeker, and the Bloodseeker may be a little bit more more powerful as a carry Owie. than Animage. Owie. Yeah. yeah, real trouble. It is daytime hunting with an Agadim's Keeper of the Light. Yeah. They five bed smokes and they pick off the lion. Not a bad kill, mm -hmm. but I'm still seeing fear of being all the space and now a full Abyssal Blade is done. 33 minutes in. That control is there. And there's no real way for Secret to pick up new items from the Secret Shop unless they bring friends. Because there is a dire observer ward. Even if this T1 Tower's alive on top, it won't be for long. Fear's moving up to take care of it. The fortification will make him, like, slow up a little bit. But with the Thunder God's wrap, they realize no one's there. He'll stick around and finish off the tower. Getting to the Secret Shop for the Radiant side is so hard. This could be a very formulaic response from Evil Geniuses quite soon here. I think they've reached a, a, a tipping point in, of sorts. If they're managed to smoke up, get a pick off, turn that into Roshan, grab the Aegis, go for another smoke play, find another pick off, they go uphill, and at that point in time, you just leave the enemy on the front lines, right? He's got Aegis and he's got a Lotus Orb on him. What do you do to stop him? He's just going to beat down your tier threes. You have to engage into that hero somehow. But it's sort of an impossible ask to engage into an enemy mage with Aegis and Lotus Orb on him and still walk away the winners of the team fight. Refreshing right, right to the middle lane, not easy, getting done by PPD and Universe, and he is down. Any mage will come in to That's kill Secure. Aegis. At that point in time, Evil Geniuses, they should be going straight for Roshan here. Yep, they may even find Kuro on their way down if Fear blinks it. Yep, they, they did see him leave, but they won't care. They'll go in, they'll finish up Roshan. And there's nothing Secret can do to stop them. Without Arteezy, they can't fight. Yeah. And they're not going to buy back on him to stop EG from doing Roshan. All Team Secret can really do is just try and split push, which you can already see Arlena's doing up there in the top lane. He's uh, also looking to be able to finish up that BKB, which is kind of a necessity. But at the same time, the BKB is not going to stop the Abyssal Blade Manta of the enemy. She blinks on S4, Abyssal's him up, and then right clicks him down with the Manta Illusions and potentially a Bash proc. He may never be able to use the self Yule Scepter. I love the defensive nature from EG. You throw out Fisher blocks, you ensure every single illusion of Naga's not there. Top lane, Owie, jumping on S4 with the finger of death, the snowball right after it. Two quick kills on the cause of Team Secret. Right up, you've just picked up an Aegis Immortal. You look to travel. Good. Yeah, the enemy at this point in time, he can go ahead, like he dropped that TP scroll, so he needs to make up for that while he's still holding on to the Aegis. So he grabs the full boots of travel now, and this also means he can go ahead and deal with any sort of split pushes out from Team Secret, who can do a lot, especially with the Keeper of the Light, um, with the Aghanims. All that recall factor is important, but Fear can deal with that and still join his team when they go for a four-man push. Now, I thought maybe they would try and push in with Alina dead, but I think they still have another smoke to utilize. Let me double check. It's, oh, no, it's they out, don't of stock, out of stock for seven minutes and... Oh, oh that's because they just use it. Look at that. Uh, well, that'll be one way to do it. Yeah, yep, PPD and Universe sitting on the front lines. And, uh, well, Universe very close to Kuro, who's in the tree line. But not close enough to break that smoke as we now go into night time. So vision restricted again and PVD preps up with an aggressive ward. There's a big double damage rune in that bottom lane as well. Maybe Fear can utilize that for the, in the next two minutes somehow. Well, is Fear the one you really want to give it to? Universe can bottle it up. He does a lot of damage when he jumps in. Oh, sure. That's not a bad idea. Uh, solely because of Walrus Punch, right? Most offlaners are not going to pick that one up, but it's the, one of the few times you may consider it. Yeah, but they, no, they leave it for Fear. It. And th now they'll try and come down for a kill, but Poppy's the only one really exposed on the bottom lane. And is he really even exposed when he's Illuminate farming out that bot lane? But with the DD rune, you can definitely force out towards the Tier 3 tower and potentially even Rax. And yeah, Poppy's bringing back help. The TPs are already on the way in from the Darkseer. 
the Illuminus slows down the creep wave, but it still gets up to the high ground, and all of EG are here ready to fight. So Fear 2 swings and that creep wave is gone. Attack in the tower, fortifications available, and there's your Lotus Orb, and Puppy mana leaking himself. Well, that's ironic, as uh, he'll have to just stand his ground. There's a double ulti available from Sumail. Throws out one, actually, sorry, he already used the Refresher Orb, so that's not available. So it was only one Thunder God's Wrath to see where Secret were. This is what the big advantage when you have control of the map. Yes, it's harder to take team fights pushing uphill, but what you can do instead is poke and prod at the enemy team. For example, like if you're questioning why Zeus popped that ultimate there, it's because they wanted to make sure they forced all of Team Secret back. And if they didn't, they would push uphill again. Once they saw, okay, Team Secret are all back, we forced them inside of their base, that's a, uh, an economical loss, right? Because they're sitting inside their base, not farming up any creeps. We go ahead and back up, and now we approach at a different lane. Maybe we deal with the push at top, or we we just take over neutrals. Fear needs vision. More than anything else, Fear needs vision. He's sitting on top of the cliffside, but doesn't see anything behind the tower. None of the heroes from Secret are visible. And now, just jumps in for the tower, stunned up. Again, the what mana leak on the copy from the Lotus Orb. Fear is backing up and universe the front lines, and there's your jumping from Aoi. They found oh, their nice. spot with the Song of the Siren. Siren. There's three of them together. Watch Hard for easy. the silence vacuum. Well, there's no right available for it. The Rob just smells sitting back, and there it is. Oh, You're back yeah. in with the Illuminate. Three heroes down for EG. One about to be reincarnated. And that is the enemy they're waiting for oh, no. him. And he blinks away in time. Zai is chasing Samal into the tree lines while Fear has basically left him to die. One lightning bolt of Babel. Zai pretty damn low. Thunder God's Wrath on cooldown. The Blood Ride's gonna go. He's just being mana leaked out. samal has got nothing more to give apart from his life. Too secret. Maybe the support from Fear. Fear. He in. runs in for the Yule Sept to control. Lions Breaker Raven. PPD! The Echo Slam and the Fidget Control. S4 getting stunned. The Blaylight almost pushing Fear out. But he is pulled back in again. Oh, PPD no. will drop. Fear has no mana. He's on the run out of here. Zai right behind him. He has enough for one blink. And now we're going to cross the river into EG territory. That's one of those plays you want to go look at. Just communication-wise, Team Secret, the way they position this is why EG thought they could actually take that with only two heroes. Two heroes that have two big AoE abilities, both Echo Slam as well as Animage's Mana Void were still up. They could easily just wipe almost all of Secret there if Secret had the wrong positioning. But you saw, despite the fact that being a very clutch area, it's tough to fight in this sort of tunnel of death, yet they were still able to do it because they kept themselves spread out enough. He couldn't find more than a two-man Echo Slam and only a one-man potential mana void. So it doesn't even throw it. Just instead tries to get the hell out of there. Man, a really big thing as well for EG is the fact that Secret... Well, okay, maybe this is bigger. Big trouble. If Fear can be controlled, there goes your man. Oh, 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 get the kill. Yeah. 95 seconds out on the sideline. And it was Arteezy that gets the kill. He's now up to 5.9k gold, claiming 812 just for his share of the kill on Fear. People have fury crafted the new Bloodseeker to death, and that's why we saw like a lot of Bloodseeker Zeus at one point in time. But do not underestimate Bloodseeker Lena, the pure damage upgrading. Now he's gonna fight a pick off on PPD. Ooh, nice snowball save. Yeah, they can keep him alive for a little bit longer. Blink up PPD. Disjoints the attack, but they've got the sun over on Universe and Samal. How much damage can he do? Not a lot, especially when he gets instead up. RTZ on the chase. The Fisher won't affect him while he's in BKB and Samal so low. He finds the kill. This is big for secret. They might be on the rampage. But Secret they... simply outplaying Evil Geniuses every step of the way as we approach this 40-minute marker. Now, they're going to be able to force buybacks by pushing uphill. That they will. They had a huge advantage, and they're starting to rebuild it in just the last three minutes. They've repaired 10,000 worth of experience deficit, and now it's Arteezy. He's the one protected by the Lotus Orb. They bring down the Tier 3 tower, and they found Fear! He's in trouble! Keep it in with a silence, giving him out University oh, push! Fisher. And as you push him up, they lock him out! You Universe is in, popping Zai up in the air, and Koro stops the fun, holds the fun with the Song of the Siren. They're waiting to come back in. They're up on the high ground with Fear Light for Ray, and they He's got gone. him. He's down, 106 seconds. Universe in trouble. This could be it. Zai being stunned up. They need more control. They need more damage. EG's backing up. They need more people. They've only got two players alive. Not a single buyback is available for any of the players who are currently dead. And this will be at least mid Rax cap. This is going to be mid Rax, and you. Usually, I think it's just absolutely two lanes of racks, potentially even mega creeps here. 
80 seconds on the clock for an anime mage. Evil Genius to somehow have to fight around the Zeus spam in order to push Team Secret back. And it is going to be one hell of an effort if EG can do it. There's your Thunder God's Wrath. Refresh from the battle. Keep number two. And that's Blood Seeker down. S4. Not in healthy position either. BKB is protecting him, but they have to retreat out. The buyback comes in from Arteezy. They're two. going for round two with PPD. Up in the air. He gets the Echo Slam on Arteezy, but it will not save his life. No that's buyback. That's GK! That's Secret will take the victory. Denying EG. Another ESL1 title. And taking another big victory for Team Secret on land. And the crowd going absolutely wild at a Team Secret win. Just as we thought, Evil Geniuses were going to be able to push this to a game number five. Team Secret show through and through. They are the better team. And now